Hello internet people, in this video I'll show you how to get site links to appear in Google search results. Unfortunately, there is no guaranteed way to do this as Google chooses when it's relevant to show those. But there are a few things you can do to increase the likelihood that Google will show them. I'll reveal 6 tips to increase your chances to get site links for your website. Jürgen, how many site links do you have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Six. Tips with punch. All right, the site links in Google search results are these additional links that show up for certain searches. These are links that Google thinks are most relevant to the site and it shows some relevant links on your site. As you can see, I have here, these are my categories like tutorials, WordPress tips, but then I also have my about page and also install Let's Encrypt. And this is just uh, my most popular blog post. And here's an example of one of my posts. And it also has these site links, but they look a bit different for posts because they actually are these smaller links at the bottom of the article. And these are basically anchor links. So I've created a table of content on this page. And then these are some of the links there. Arnie, what do you search on Google? And it was very sensitive. So the first thing you can do is make sure your website ranks first in the search results because Google shows site links mostly for the first result. It helps that your brand name is unique. If your website's name is not unique, for example, something like Amsterdam Tulip Company, the chances are that your website will never appear with site links just because the name is too generic and Google doesn't know what exactly do you mean? Unless you become something like Apple. In this case, Google knows that if people search just for Apple, they're actually looking for the company, not the fruit. For example, in my case, if I type in punch salad like this, that it's one word, then this snippet appears. But then, for example, if I actually look for punch salad as two words, you actually start seeing fruit punch salad, which kind of makes sense. <laughs> The second thing you need to take into consideration is that people should be searching for your website name. So if you have no traffic yet, you're just starting out, then getting these site links will be very hard and I don't think you're going to see them anytime soon. So you do need some searches for that keyword. So you can see here in the Google search console, I get about 80 clicks for punch salad in three months. So it's not a lot, you don't need that much, but there just has to be some sort of, uh, some traffic that comes from these links. Otherwise, Google site links will avoid your site like this. Why are you running? Why are you running? Now, the third thing you need to make sure you have on your site is the structured data on the website. So what structured data is usually this schema.org, it's just a type of data that's structured in a way that search engines can actually find it and read it really easily. And in the code, it looks like this. So it's a lot of gibberish, but basically it just has things like, what is this website about? Who's the owner? Uh, the image of this particular post and things like that. The good thing is if you're using WordPress and you're using Yoast SEO plugin for your SEO things on your site, then it comes with it. So basically there's no even settings you can turn it on or off. The only thing you can do is for certain posts, you can just turn the schema off. So here I have a, this is my article. And if I scroll down to the bottom, you can see you can actually exclude it from schema. But if you keep it as default, you always have this there. So this is really great. It's as impressive as these special effects. What the hell? What a bastard. My name is Robert and if this is your first time here and you want to learn more about how to improve your website, get more traffic and other website related stuff, make sure to hit that subscribe Ding button dong. so you don't miss out on anything. My fourth tip is that you actually create a simple and easy to understand site and menu structure. So for example, in my case, my menu is super simple. I basically have two links at the top and these are actually, my about page does show up in the site links, but what is really important on the site, this is my homepage. I also have recent posts and categories here as well. So these links are, which are showing up the most in site links. If I had some of these in the menu, it would probably increase the likelihood they will show up as well. Just make sure that your menu is 
it's logical and that the most important links that you would like to see in the site links, they actually show up somewhere on the homepage. I wouldn't recommend to put them all in the footer. Actually, I don't even have footer because all my important links show up here. My fifth tip is to add XML sitemap to your website using Google Search Console. Now, if you're using WordPress, it's very easy to create a sitemap. I have Yoast SEO and again, it creates the sitemap for you. It's super simple, but sitemap is basically, it's a map of all the URLs, all the pages you have on your site, and they're written in a language that is super easy for the search engine to understand, and they can process them and then they can create their archives. So in this case, for example, these are all my posts and you can see these just list each of the posts have and also when they were last modified. This is super important information for Google because this way you'll know how fresh your content is and things like that. And then once, you, once you've installed the plugin Yoast SEO, you'll have this by default and then you can also submit the sitemap to Google and you can do it through Google Search Console and the good thing is I have a video how to do all of this and I'll leave a link in the description. So check it out there. And if you haven't noticed, I like Yoast SEO and this is how I talk to it. My foot, my, oh, oh my stomach, oh my stomach, oh my now my sixth tip is to add a table of contents for your long form post. So for example, here I have a post and basically when you scroll a little bit down, you have the table of contents here. Now. How do you know if it's table content? Well, when you hover over it, you can actually see at the bottom of the page that there's hashtag what is Cloudflare, for example. So if I click on it, you see here in the URL, it gives this hashtag. The hashtag is just anchor link on this page. And I think Google just grabs these and then it's able to create a nice looking site links for posts like I showed you before, like this one here, you see? And again, I'll leave a great tutorial in the description so you can see how to do this in WordPress. One more thing I want to mention that you can't demote a link in site links anymore. Basically before you could actually have Sam saying what shows up here. So for example, if I don't want about punch salad, I could go to Google Search Console and remove it from there. But right now that's not possible anymore. So Google generates everything itself. And if you see something weird here, you just need to work with the schema or any other six tips I just mentioned before and get it updated that way. My name is Robert. And if you're looking to master the digital world while getting entertained, this is the channel for you. So hit that subscribe button and find the bell icon so that you get notified about new videos. Here are two videos related to GA that I think you should watch next. Oh,